Operation Silver Bayonet by GMT, 25th Anniversary Edition. So I'm coming to you from my cousin Patty's bunker in Chicago, Illinois, the suburbs. Um, and I'm going to be giving this game a shot. Um, I played it a couple times before. This will just be a solo playthrough. Now, this game really is not meant to be played um, solo as a campaign, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, part of uh, my curiosity with this game. Let me reach out of here. Is um, this hidden movement system. Um, so, the... Two primary forces uh, going up against each other in this were um, the uh, North Vietnamese, which uh, were composed of <clears throat> VC. In this case, uh, we've got a local force. Um, there were also some regular VC units that were deployed in this campaign. And uh, NVA, the North Vietnamese Army Regulars. Um, so, if you've ever seen the movie We Were Soldiers or read the book, which is fantastic, highly recommended, We Were Soldiers Once and Young, um, you'll know that the NVA were uh, uniformed soldiers who. Um, you know, were sent down from North Vietnam to fight in the South. And their general objective was to take the city of Pleiku, which is up here in the upper right hand corner, and uh, Highway 19. And this they hoped um, in the central highlands of Vietnam would uh, effectively cut the, cut the country in half. So, <clears throat> naturally opposed to this were the South Vietnamese, which are represented, um, known as Arvin, represented by these yellow tokens here. And then supporting them, of course, It's the good old U.S. of A. Which is in green here. So this was uh, very early in the Vietnam War. Um, this was the basically the opening campaign uh, that saw heavy U.S. commitment. Um, so I'm by no means going to be doing uh, a, a concise review of this game. This will be a rambling mess and <laughs> um, not even sure if I'll finish again. This is not really meant to be played solo, but that's something that I, uh, I want to try out, um, especially because we're doing this whole COVID mess. Um, so yeah, I've tried playing this before with uh, my cousin's husband. Uh, we play a lot of go together. Um, we got a couple turns into it. Um, I've also tried pulling it on my own, just some of the other smaller scenarios. Um, I have a few different ideas for trying to uh, keep this hidden movement system slightly randomized. So I am relinquishing a little bit of control to the die roll. Um, I'm going to try to simulate not knowing where the exactly these uh, NVA and VC units are located. So if we take a look over here, um, if I put a unit in box 12, then presumably he's in flag 12. And so if I move him around and about, uh, regardless, I'm still going to be engaging with um, 
in this case, B966. Be the designation up here. As far as the other things on the token, we've got um, stacking. How many stacking points it costs? Down here, we've got. Uh, Got to do this backwards, not easy. Down here, we've got his attack factor, his defend factor, and his movement factor. And then over here to the right, um, that's his coordination ability. So this game has uh, a mechanic built into it when units meet each other in battle, uh, the attacker is forced to roll for coordination to see how well his units uh, behave and coordinate with each other throughout the attack. You have two basic types of attack. You have assault, which is the sort of bloody all-in, just as you would imagine. Primarily what the um, Pavin, which is the name for both the VC and the NDA together, People's Army of Vietnam. Uh, pri primarily what they're relegated to. And then on the flip side, we had the maneuver, which is something that the US can pull off to fatigue units more easily. Fatigued units um, are not capable of offensive action. If I'm remembering the rules correctly, I'm going to be kind of reading up the rules as we go along and hopefully explaining some things for both you and myself. Um, these are by no means the starting positions of things in the game. Um, instead, what I'm trying to do here is again randomize a little bit of doing the, the search phase. So I'm hoping to keep all of the hidden unit markers um, separated 1 one through 10, uh, the teens up to 20, and then um, the 20s through the 30s. And that way, if I want to, if I you know, can remember the position of these units as I'm playing, um, when I go to search them, I can instead roll a dice if I feel like, uh, let's say I'm searching through the teens, that'd be a 14. So that means that I can send out my, the US player can send out helicopter units or whatever to look at number 14 and it kind of forces me to use a little bit of randomness, but really only if I want to. Um, gonna try to play it as realistically as possible. Uh, as the historical campaign went, the uh, Pavin really had a difficult time standing up in, in full battle with the U.S. Um, it was not, it was a fairly one-sided affair with exception to a few engagements. Of course, uh, the NVA were also very good at um, sticking around and uh, being tenacious. Um, which would characterize the rest of the war, as we all know. So, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how the whole thing plays out. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing if I could get the NVA player to win. I just always find it interesting if I could reverse, I guess, the historical outcome to a degree. Um, this being just the outcome of the campaign, of course, not of not of the entire war, um, which is <laughs> a whole different ball game there, a whole different question, so which we're not going to cover here. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I don't know. I I enjoy uh, some other YouTuber videos that are kind of like this that ramble through board games, so I'm going to do my best to kind of bring you along in this adventure and see uh, see if we can produce something that is even moderately uh, interesting to watch. All right.